So here we have an interesting project. This is an old folding table made by my girlfriend Heather's uncle Bartley. And it's a pretty cool piece of engineering woodwork here. It folds up just like that. But as you can see, it's pretty weathered. It's pretty beaten up. And I think we're gonna do a restoration on it. So I got the camera rolling. We're gonna clean this thing up, try to get it a little bit nicer looking. So in order to do a restoration on something like this, we're gonna have to take this all apart. Um, there's a few screws in it. We'll take everything apart, sand it down. We'll put some protective sealant on it. Um, and then, yeah, it'll be done. It'll be a fun little project. Here we go, let's start by taking it apart. So I noticed that a lot of this stuff is, you know, really dirty and just, you know, I think I'm going to go ahead and hit it with some 60 grit sandpaper real quick just to show all the cracks that need to be repaired because I need to see what needs to be repaired first, obviously. So let's go ahead and sand these down just roughly. So one of the first things I notice about this project is we have a lot of splits. A lot of this wood is split open. There's a lot of cracks, you know. Um, and I still want to use the original boards. I don't want to rebuild the thing. I mean, I could build another one easily, but um, I want to use the original parts that Uncle Bartley used. So what we're going to do is we're going to attempt to repair some of these. And I'll show you how to do that. Before we do any of the sanding or anything, we want to go ahead and try to repair these cracks because it's going to leave bumps of glue that we're going to need to sand flat anyway. I'm going to get all the pieces together that need repairing and we'll get on to that. You see right here, sanding the end of this dowel revealed a nice crack in there. Now, there's a couple ways to do these kind of cracks. I'm not quite done sanding yet. All right, so I'm going to continue sanding here. I have a few more pieces to go. So we've got a big old split right there. That goes probably almost all the way through the wood. I think you guys are gonna enjoy the way that I fix this. That paper's, that sandpaper's kind of beat right there. It's time to change that out. But as you can see, we're getting a little bit further here with the wood. Um, you can still see a lot of weathering in the, the wood grain and everything. So we're gonna keep sanding until we get this, you know, pretty clean. It's also bowed. If you look at it this way, you can see it has like a cup to it like this, just barely. Uh, the right way to do this would be to run this through a planer, flatten that out, and then this board would end up being, you know, an eighth inch thinner overall. But I'm just gonna go ahead and do my best to knock down the high edges along the sides here and the middle on the back side. And that should straighten it up a little bit. It's not gonna be perfect, but I do not have a planer. All right, so we've got everything sanded um, roughly. I try to get as much of that weathering and stuff off as I possibly could. And there's still some there. And the best remedy for something like this would be to, you know, during finishing, I would stain it a little bit darker, like I was thinking mahogany brown. But Heather insists you want it natural wood, how it used to be. Um, of course, it, it'll never be that way, so we're still going to see a lot of these pits. Um, a lot of these cracks aren't going to go away. Um, but, but at the very least, we're going to make it structural, structurally, how do you say that? Structurally better. <laughs> so let's go ahead and I'm just going to show you guys how I'm going to repair these cracks. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a small clamp like this. I'm just going to clamp it. I'll just tighten it down close that crack up. See that? Actually, I want to go up a little bit higher, right about there to the edge. And we'll close these cracks up. Now, 
We're gonna take some cyanoacrylate or super glue. This is the super thin kind. The reason we're using super thin is because when you put this, especially in end grain or in cracks, when you put it in there, it's gonna actually wick right into the crack and it's gonna repair it. So we're just gonna go ahead and add some super glue and you'll, you might be able to see it following this crack down once we get that far. Get all over your fingers too. You wanna get them right in the holes as well because that's where all the cracks are forming. And then we're gonna sand this flat when we're done. You can see right there, see how it's darker? Right here, you can see where it's getting darker. It's following the crack down. Look at that. All right, we're just gonna do that for pretty much everything, just to repair stuff. You don't have to leave this clamp on very long, uh, maybe, you know, less than a minute, and that'll be cured. When I put super glue on the ends, the wood grain acts like little straws and it sucks it right in. It's also, that's gonna help prevent any future weathering or cracking. It's gonna seal all these ends up. There we go, we repaired that big crack that was on here too. Okay, I think we have a little bit more to go here and then we're gonna sand everything down to 220. That is going to be boring, so I'm not gonna bore you with it. Okay, so as you can see here, we have some severe cracks all throughout the end of this. Uh, the super glue, first of all, if I clamp this thing, there's a chance of it actually breaking because it's a little bit bowed. So I have a different way to fix this. I'm still gonna go ahead and seal the ends with super glue straight off, but then we're gonna use some liquid epoxy sealer and seal the entire, all of these boards. Everything's gonna get completely sealed. This super glue is just like a structural pre-measure because if we didn't do this, eventually this thing would just fall apart and disintegrate. So seal in the ends, put some super glue for now. All right, we have everything sanded down to 60 grit. I got all of this super glue off, but as you can see, there's still some staining inside. Um, I would be able to get rid of those with a, um, a countersink um, drill bit, just to knock out that black and everything. But I think I'm gonna kind of leave it how it is. I, I kind of like that you can tell that it's old and rustic looking. Um, so I intentionally am gonna leave some of this stuff there. Especially on these, there's some really deep scratches and stuff. That's, I mean, I could take care of that with a planer, like I said, but I'm going to leave it how it is. The next thing I wanna do is I wanna get a damp rag. This is just a chopped up t-shirt. And I'm gonna actually put a light coat of water on all of the board surfaces. The reason I'm doing this, when you touch the wood with water, the freshly sanded wood with water, it actually raises the grains up after it dries out and then you can do a more efficient sanding once you go to your next grit up. So after this, I'm going to 100 and that's gonna knock out. See, you can still see all these little round scratches from the, from the buzzer. It's gonna raise those up and make it easier to sand them off and it'll look a lot better. So I'm just gonna wet all these boards down just lightly. Don't wanna get them soaking wet, just, just enough to raise the grain. All right, so everything sanded down to 150. I went ahead and stopped at 150. I didn't see a need to go any further than that. The next step is gonna be some clear penetrating epoxy sealer. Um, who is this made by? I forget who it's made by. Check the description if you're interested in this stuff. This stuff is awesome. I used it um, while building guitars. I always put this on my guitars before um, before doing the final you know, finish and everything. So what this does basically is it repairs wood. So if I had the filler stuff, I could fill in these cracks and everything, but this stuff on its own is really good as far as preserving wood. So, I mean, they use this stuff on boats and everything. So yeah, this will work really good. It's basically a two part liquid epoxy. So it's 50-50, but they've been sitting in storage for about two years, so I don't know if it's any good. All right, there's one. It's still good. It's like a 50-50 mix. 
There we go. This wood's gonna soak this stuff up really quick, but I don't wanna super saturate it. I still need some for my tabletop. All right, so I just got a cut up t-shirt here. There we go. See that? You'll see all the scratches. It's gonna make all those scratches pop out since it's a natural wood finish. If we would've went dark, it would've helped cover it up. They still wouldn't be invisible with a you know, like a dark mahogany stain or something. I don't think it's gonna look too bad. And it's, it'll be structurally better. It's not gonna fall apart anymore. It was, it was on its last leg. That actually looks kind of cool. I like that. It's like zebra stripe cracks. I should put a little more sealer on, on this one. I have some of this clear wood finish, the satin stuff. Maybe I'll just spray this on top because this stuff, I remember, it's very sticky. That's why I wear gloves. So. I'll see you in a couple hours here and we'll put this thing back together after we spray it. All right, here's the completed project. Um, putting this thing back together, I didn't film that part. Um, it was very difficult just to figure out how to put this thing back together. Uh, I didn't mention earlier in the video that uh, Uncle Bartley was a puzzle maker as well. And apparently he made a bunch of stuff like this. And yeah, I think it turned out pretty good. A lot better than what it used to look like. Like I said, you can still see some of the cracks. Well, you can see pretty much all the cracks, really. There it is all folded up. Still some cracks in here, but these are all filled with super glue. It's not gonna split anymore. This one here actually split a little bit more when I put that screw back in, cause I put super glue in the holes, which made the holes smaller. So when I reinserted the same screws, it split a little bit there. So, I mean, it's still better than it was. It ain't perfect. But it's been a while since I did any woodworking whatsoever. Um, you'll probably see some more woodworking videos here. Um, but if you'd rather see them over on Clutch Guitars TV, my other YouTube channel, and we'll leave Clutch Guitars for um, like treasure hunting and stuff, let me know in the comments. If you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and do that. I put out a new video every couple days. That's all I got for today. Thanks for watching.